Well, good morning. Today we are talking about two men that were walking on a road, not having a clue that Jesus was walking right beside them. This is the Back Shed Bible Study. Today is Monday, April 18th, 2022. This is episode number 103. Welcome. All right, so uh, here we are. It's a beautiful Monday morning in Fair Oaks, California, as I always like to say. 103 episodes in. That means we're, we are a couple of years into doing this backshed thing, which is, which is just crazy when I think about it. And uh, the fact that we have j- been going for two years and that uh, some of you have been faithfully watching along for two years. I love it. I love you all. Great day uh, for Easter Sunday yesterday at sunrise. If you were there, uh, boy, what a, what a great way to celebrate. If you weren't there, may I highly suggest you go back and watch online. Uh, it was one of those Sundays that I loved because everything went wrong behind the scenes. And when everything goes wrong behind the scenes, I, I told Luke this backstage uh, before he went out in uh in first sec- first service i i just said god must have something really good to say through you this morning so um it was just neat i love it when everything goes wrong because it it allows god the room to work we put our plans away and we let his plans be the ones that uh that lead us and i think that perspective is so important. Sonia, yes, right? It was a great, great day. And, and you know, and that's the thing. We had, you know, the, the slides weren't working, so we weren't able to, to have the notes and the words on the screen. And um, our live stream died at one point, and computers were crashing, and, and all of that happens and God's still at work and God's still sovereign and God's still on the throne. So, you know, that's, that's perspective. And when things just kind of go awry, I think we need to stop and say, okay, God's doing something bigger than, uh, than I can imagine. So, um, and the same happens here in the shed. So uh, as uh, some of you know, I had uh, promised that today you would be hearing from my friend, Dan Knoin and, and Dan is, a um, like I call Dan my friend. He is an elder at Sunrise. He leads the. Um, oh boy, you changed your name. Uh, he leads the Celebrate Christ class at Sunrise, and um, and uh, yeah, all kinds of things. And uh, he's also an architect. Um, worked uh, specifically as a church architect and put together all kinds of things. And over the last. Uh, several years, Dan has been compiling uh, a lot of his teachings into a book full of daily devotions called Useful to the Master. And we were going to talk about this this morning. Unfortunately, uh, Dan is feeling a little under the weather today. And, uh, um, and so with that, we, we discussed it and said, we're going to uh, do his episode at a later time. And in the meantime, um, I went digging. I went digging back for for a message that I did uh, for Easter in 2017, and um, and this was fun because I couldn't even find the slides that I used. So I was gonna, you know, be all fancy and put slides up on the screen, but instead we're just gonna open the Word of God today and uh, and jump into that. So if you uh, if you're if you are watching along. Get your Bibles out. We're going to be in Luke chapter 24 today, following along with, uh, like I said, it's a, it's an Easter message that I got to give at sunrise back in 2017. And what stands out to about that to me is that was another time when it was, uh, just a few weeks prior to this, uh, that our pastor at the time, Derek had gotten in a skiing accident and and was was not doing well and we had uh, a lot of us were 
coming back and, and, you know, preaching last minute and things like that. And, and that was the first Easter that I ever got to preach at sunrise. And, uh, this was the message that I did. So I'm resurrecting the Easter message from uh, 2017, last second here this morning. And like I said, the best part, uh, again, you know, the the best laid plans of uh, whatever that is saying is, mice and men. Um, I couldn't even find my notes, but I found them last second. So you're going to get a little bit unscripted last second uh, here, but I think this is going to be fun. Valerie, good morning. Good to see you, Randy. Good to see you. Love you guys. Looking forward to our elder retreat coming up at the end of this week. Those of you that are a part of Sunrise uh, or not a part of Sunrise, I'd be encouraging you to pray for our elders as we all get away in the coming week, uh, Thursday through Saturday, to uh, to retreat and to plan and to really just you know pray and be sure we're all on the same page um, as leaders of Sunrise. So definitely be praying for our elders in this coming week, Thursday through Saturday. Um, all right, here we go. Lou, oh, last thing before we jump in. Uh, great feedback from last week. Thank you. For those of you that did not get to watch, it was a fun morning talking about the history of our country in Thomas Jefferson and George Washington. Um, so if you want a little bit of a history lesson and get the perspective on how uh, faith in Christ, how belief in the Bible and scripture uh, were part of the forming of our nation, it was a neat episode Episode with uh, my kid's history teacher. So that was, uh, that was a lot of fun. We recorded it from the Capitol Mall in, uh, or the National Mall is what it's called, in Washington, D.C. Um, it was a uh, fun morning. Yeah, for sure. Have John watch that one, Valerie. I, um, I enjoyed it a lot myself. Uh, as you'll see if you watch it, I was very distracted. So, but it was fun. And uh, while I was along the way there, we had a great trip. Let me tell you what. Um, I had a great time with my son, Peter. Peter's a freshman in high school. And he is growing and maturing. Uh, and this was one of those things where I looked and said, uh, I need to go with him on this trip and just be there. And you know what? He enjoyed being with me. I enjoyed being with him. We just, we just had a neat time being a father and a son and looking at airplanes in the Smithsonian Museum and, and all the kinds of things that, that got us excited to, uh, to be together. So good time. Thank you for those of uh, you that were praying for us uh, through that trip. All right, we're in Luke chapter 24. We're resurrecting an old message from Easter 2000, a long time ago, 17, five years ago. Like I said, for those that just jumped on the first ever Easter message, I got to got to preach at sunrise. This is the road to Emmaus. And, and it's, it's a little bit of an odd Easter message because it happens after, um, after the cross and just shortly after the resurrection, but it's, it's kind of immediately after the resurrection. And so not everybody yet knows, not all of Christ's disciples know that, uh, that this has taken place. And so, uh, and pardon me, because I'm going to be looking off screen at my notes over here on the side as we go along. So if this was ever a day to listen to the audio version and not the video version, um, uh, do that. So uh, we are about seven and a half miles to the west of Jerusalem is where this is taking place. It's what they would call a short half day's journey. Um, and uh, it's, it's a minor uh, story, a minor theme in Luke, uh, story of a journey along. And you have two men walking. So we're going to pick this up at verse 13. It says, uh, now, that same day, two of them were going to a village called Emmaus, about seven miles from Jerusalem. They were talking with each other about everything that had happened. And, and as you look at this, uh, you have these two men walking. They are identified as Cleopas, and, and then another one is an unidentified disciple, um, and it's they're kind of walking along a pathway on, on a road. Um, 
if you looked back a few days in the story, these men had probably been a part of the triumphal entry. They had probably been there when Jesus descended from the Mount of Olives or from Bethany and on into Jerusalem. They'd probably been there two days ago and witnessed uh, the horrifying events of uh, Friday afternoon uh, on the cross. And, uh, and it's important that Luke in verse 13 identifies that there are two of them that have that were along um, on the road. Good morning, Linda. Good to see you watching along and so many others. Um, Valerie, you read the story this morning. That's fun. I love it. So, so it's important that, that Luke identifies two of them because this is in Jewish tradition um, validating the story. Okay. So, hey, there were two people there. They both affirmed that this happened. Okay. And so verse 15, as they talked and discussed these things with each other, Jesus himself came up and walked alongside, along with them but they were kept from recognizing him. And so these two verbs, as they talked and discussed these things with each other, they are implying that in in this, a very intense, a very troubled conversation. These, These two men are wrestling through everything that they had just witnessed, everything that had just happened, and nothing is making sense to them. It is not Uh, They're trying to put together the pieces of what had happened. They had probably witnessed, like we said, that triumphal entry. And yet here's Jesus dead on the cross. They're, they're just overwhelmed with what they've seen. And, um, and so we move on and, and you have Jesus himself uh, coming up alongside them there in verse 15 Jesus himself came up and walked along with them. Big takeaway out of that verse for me is that Jesus walks alongside us. Um, And uh, uh, Jesus walks alongside us. And often we have absolutely no clue that he is walking alongside us right there. Uh, Let's see. Oh, Valerie, you're you're mentioning that. Uh, let me come back here and and see what you said. Verse thirty four refers to Simon, who what was the other person? So, I, as I studied this, and forgive me for a second because, um, like I said, this was five years ago that I did the study on this, and I pulled this up about ten minutes ago. Um, so, so I'm going to be a little fuzzy here. Um, but I had that in my notes that the one man was Cleopas and the other man was not identified. And, and then you have them returning to Jerusalem at the end of this passage. And it says, um, there they found the 11 with those assembled together and saying, it's true. The Lord has risen, has appeared to Simon. And then the two told what had happened on that day on the way and how Jesus recognized by them. Um, so so there's a, a, what I understand is a separate appearance to Simon. And then you have these two men um, that, that he appeared to. So it's a, a different situation where Simon had, Peter had a one and these two had another. That's my reading of it. But again, this was five years ago that I did this study. So uh, <laughs> forgive me and don't quote me too much here. Um Okay, so we come up and and Jesus is walking alongside them. They don't recognize him. Not only do they not recognize him, but he was actually preventing them from being able to recognize him. And and I think it's important to realize sometimes that uh, Jesus is walking alongside us and he might not want us uh, to know that he is necessarily right there. Um, in our presence, okay? Um, At that point, he was willfully withholding um, himself from being recognized by them. Let let that one blow your mind away a little bit, okay? Um, And I'm trying to kind of keep looking down here to see if there are any other discussion things coming on. I have I literally have three screens going here this morning, so uh, it's it's kind of fun. Okay, so let's move on here. Um, We'll keep reading. Verse 17 here. He asked them, what are you discussing together as you walk along? 
and they stood still their faces downcast and one of them named cleopas okay so we know that cleopas is one of them asked him are you the only one visiting jerusalem who does not know the things that have happened there in these days like come on dude where you been don't you know what happened everybody knew that jesus christ had been crucified he says what things and they say well about jesus of nazareth he was a prophet powerful in word and deed before god and all the people the chief priests and our rulers handed him over to be sentenced to death and they crucified him but we had hoped that he was the one who was going to redeem israel and what is more it is the third day since all this took place in addition some of our women amazed us they went to the tomb early this morning but didn't find his body they came and told us what they had that they had seen a vision of angels who said he was alive then some of our companions went to the tomb and found it just as the women said but they didn't see jesus but they did not see jesus <laughs> okay so so it like just stop here for a second these guys um just described everything that had happened and they're downcast, they're downtrodden. Um, notice verse 21, where he says, but we had hoped that he was the one who was going to redeem Israel. That word that is used there is, is used in a fairly weak manner, um, it, it, as opposed to we had trusted, we just hoped, we hoped, you know, like, I, I hope that someday I win a million dollars. You know, like, it, it was just the the way that they use that that word was pretty weak anyway so they had hoped uh one bible commentator's no, named uh, walter leefield leefeld describes this as a pathetic reminder of their inability to recognize jesus or to believe the report of the empty tomb and so they had already heard the report um that the tomb was empty and you know this should have turned on you know all kinds of bells ringing in their minds to go hey something something just happened here and and it was amazing now yeah, let's keep reading verse 22 um and uh so i just read this part but we're going to read it again it says in addition some of our women amazed us they went to the tomb early this morning but didn't find his body. They came and told us they'd seen visions of angels who said he was alive. And some of our companions went to the tomb, found it just as they had said, but they didn't see Jesus. And so um, the irony of what's coming into pass is that these two guys had completely missed it. And I wonder how many times do we um, completely miss it along the way when um, some mirac mir miraculous thing is happening right in front of us and and we can't even see you know through the for the forest through the trees kind of thing and um and so i love it verse 25 he says to them how foolish you are and how slow to believe all that the prophets have spoken um in the midst of their pain because you can you know that they're grieving you know that they're they're kind of blown away right now um, Jesus still isn't afraid to rebuke them. I think sometimes we, uh, in our uh, weak understanding of Jesus, uh, we want him to meet us the way we want him to, which is, you know, kind of loving and comforting all the time. And sometimes he meets us in the form of rebuke, a stern rebuke, when we wanted to be coddled or held or whatever it is, um, sometimes he rebukes us and that's, that's okay. Uh, verse 26, he says, uh, did not the Messiah have to suffer these things and then enter his glory? So suffering was prophesied, yet it was still hard to believe that the Messiah must suffer. So, you know, if these guys had been doing their studying, which they had, I'm sure, um, they knew that the Messiah would have to suffer, and yet they refused to believe that the Messiah would have to suffer. And so beginning, verse 27, with Moses and all the prophets, he explained to them what was said in all the scriptures concerning himself. Um, and so he is, uh, this is really cool because it's, it's before Jesus is going to reveal to them who he is. Um, he 
reveals the scriptures and helps bring them to an understanding. He teaches them along the way. All right, let's see here. Right, we are moving on down to, um, they're approaching the village. Verse 28, where they were going, Jesus continued on as if he were going farther, but they urged him strongly, stay with us for it is nearly evening. The day is almost over. And so he went in to stay with them. And verse 30, when he was at the table with them, he took bread, gave thanks, broke it and began to give it to them. Then their eyes were open and they recognized him. And it doesn't say it, but immediately he disappeared from their sight. And it was once when they were finally in communion with him that he completely revealed himself to them. And yet only momentarily, then he disappears, right? Uh, boy, there is so much in this to apply to, to how um, God communicates with us. Um, and and just this whole concept of the presence of God, that Jesus is with them, he's communing with them. And once they're in that, that intimate communion, then they see it. And that's all Jesus gives them. And he takes off, right? Because we all want the conversation. We all want to have that revelation. And we see him. And they're like, oh, okay, now, Jesus, tell me, what happened this? What was it like to be on the cross? What was it? You know, he didn't give them that chance. They were left with so many more questions. And we, even in the most intimate communion that we get with Christ, at the end, can still be left with so many questions as we are here in our earthly bodies uh, and not have his manifest presence with us all the time. So, uh, oh, it's a challenge, right? Because I just, you know, you want to ask all the questions and he doesn't let us. All right, we're going to keep moving on and, uh, and we're going to round the corner and head to home here. We're at uh, verse uh, 32, I believe. As we work our one, they asked each other, were not our hearts burning within us um, while he talked with us on the road and opened scripture to us? And they got up and returned at once to Jerusalem. And so they take off again, seven miles uh, back to Jerusalem. I used to be able to run that in a short amount of time. I can't do that anymore. Um. They found the 11 and those with them assembled together and saying, it is true. The Lord has risen and has appeared to Simon. Then the two told what had happened on the way and how Jesus was recognized by them when he broke the bread. And uh, the first response, I love this, is their first response when they realized all of this is they headed back to Jerusalem and got together with the other followers of Christ. And, and isn't that a fascinating response? Because the, the crucif after the crucifixion had happened, you, you saw this steady dispersion of the followers that kind of just went off. These guys recognized immediately, we need to go back and be with the believers. And um, when we encounter the real Christ, we need to be with other believers. Um, you know, there are times when we are dispersed, um, but we need to be with other believers and together, together with them. So um, let's see here. I, uh, uh, when we did this sermon, when I did this sermon years ago, five years ago, I, I talked about several things that had happened in what I call my own personal Emmaus Road. Um, that kind of was between 2009 and 2014. And it was a, it was a season when um, uh, we had uh, uh, a mentor in my life, the guy that I worked for had been let go uh, from his position. And it kind of, kind of crushed me in, in so many ways. It wasn't long after that, that our, our daughter passed away. Um, again, that crushed me. Um, and my wife, um, I, uh, 
brought to an end 15 years of ministry and working at Hume Lake. That was, that was difficult. That was a hard season to, to leave that. I went to another camp for a year. Didn't work out so well. That was another hard season. Um, and, uh, and you think you kind of got everything all figured out and things continue to just crush you. And, and the thing is, you don't realize so often how God is working redemption in the midst of all the pain. And, and can I just say, like, this is, I, I've said this so many times, this is a common theme that we talk about here in this shed where things are messy. You can see things are just kind of piling up. The junk is piling up. It hasn't been cleaned up lately. Um, that, uh, that life is messy. Life is hard. We go through hard, hard times. And yet those, those hard times that we go through are part of the redeeming work that Christ is doing in our lives and that he is, is carrying us through this. He is walking with us through this. And often as he's walking us through this or carrying us, these are some of the darkest, hardest times in our lives. And it's hard to see him and know that he's right there with us. And every once in a while, you just get this little glimpse that he's there and you go, wow. Oh, and then suddenly you don't see him again. Okay. Um, and, and yet when, when April and I had gone through that really tough season with our daughter, loss of our daughter, one of those things that really stood out to us is we started praying that God would show us glimpses of his redemption, as opposed to showing the full redemption, that we could just see glimpses here and there. And we started to see little glimpses on that. And, and so, you know, I, I want to challenge us uh, when, when you look at these guys walking along on the road to Emmaus, they got to have a glimpse of the risen Savior. And, and it ended up being for them in that moment a memory of a conversation had on a road rather than um, them continuing a walk all the way back to Jerusalem with Jesus walking along with them. No. And, and that is how God works at times. Um, sometimes we're in this deep intimacy and other times we know he's there, but, or we realize he's there, but we're not in that, just that moment by moment communion, but he is there and he has been walking along with us and he is in the process of redeeming. So I close with this. Look at this. Good sermon has like a few closing points. Are you personally on the road to Emmaus today? Are you carrying pain and hurt that is unresolved? Are you questioning God, maybe his very existence? Are you questioning that he is who you've known him to be? You know, those guys were questioning that. I, I thought he was this. I thought he was the Messiah. And you know what? They were right. But in that moment of humanity, they didn't remember all the things that had been prophesied. And they were struggling. Um, maybe here's question number two, are you walking and talking, not realizing that Jesus is right beside you walking and talking with you? And so are you going along on a road, not realizing that you're actually, you actually have the risen savior that is right by your side, that is coming alongside you, just having a conversation with you. Maybe you don't realize it. I I love my grandfather uh, on my mom's side was just this godly, godly man. He died when I was 13 years old. So, so I've, you know, I have some great memories of him, but not enough. You know, it's one of those things. Um, but my grandfather is one that always believed you never knew when you would be entertaining angels. Right. And so his, his attitude was always one that, uh, I'm going to treat strangers with care and respect uh, because you never know uh, when, when you actually have an angel that's walking right there with you. thought that was interesting. Just, just brought that to my mind. Um, question number three as we, as we land this plane, is Christ revealing, revealing himself to you this morning 
and you're realizing that he's been walking with you all the way along, all the way along. Have there been things that have just been kind of coming up as you've been interacting with this and listening along or watching along? And suddenly you're like, Christ is there. He is right here with me. Um, question number four, even though these disciples were heading away from Jerusalem and were away from um, other disciples, Jesus came and met them right where they were. That's not a question. It's a statement. So even though these disciples were heading away from Jerusalem and away from the other disciples, Jesus still came and met them right where they were. And maybe you have headed away from the church. Maybe you have headed away from fellowship with other followers of Christ. Jesus is still right there, right beside you. He never leaves. Okay. Finally, response. Are your eyes opened this morning to see the risen Christ who has been walking alongside you all this time? And uh, so your eyes being open this morning to see the risen Christ who has been walking alongside you all this time. How great is that? Man, I love this going back. It's, a, it's an Easter message. It's, it's a follow-up to Easter. So, you know, this happened right after um, that resurrection. And uh, uh, these guys had heard that Jesus had been resurrected, but they didn't believe it yet with their own eyes. And so Jesus revealed himself to them. Um, um, yeah, Carol, let's see. Uh, let's see here. I'm trying to read everything you said here. You've lost so many loved ones, but I know that God is there for me. And I really wonder how do people get through hard times without God, right? I, I couldn't agree with you more, Carol. That is so true, you know? And, and every time I go to a funeral, which these days, that's every time I do a funeral, um, uh, perform that, I, I just, I don't understand how people without Christ can do it. I just don't understand. Um, it is the hope in the resurrection, the hope of a risen Christ. Um, hi, sunshine. Good to see you here this morning. My dog's here with me. Um, so there we go. I'm going to pray as we close things off today. Great comments today. Uh, Mimi, thank you for jumping in on um, uh, your comment there. I'm glad you joined us too. Happy day. Valerie, that's why it's important to remember his faithfulness in the past, which remember, that's why we set up the Ebenezer's, the rocks along the way where you, back when, when Joshua, uh, God had Joshua get the elders of each tribe to, to set up a memorial stone there at the Jordan where they had crossed so they could remind, go back and remember how God had shown up uh, when they crossed the Jordan River, right? Okay. Got to remember those things. Remember when he shows up. Let's pray. And then I'll have a couple uh, final closing thoughts for you. Father, thank you this morning um, for your good work, um, your redemption, Lord, how you uh, give us glimpses of you along the way, and yet you remain mysterious in so many other ways. And uh, oh boy, I wish that we could just uh, have this full conversation. I could ask you why and all these things on so many. And yet, Lord, I know that you withhold things uh, for a greater knowledge that we're going to have when we are with you in glory. And so we look forward to that day um, when all will be revealed and, and we will know the truth completely. Um, for now, we do know the truth. And the truth is that you, um, you are good and faithful. You have set us free and you do walk alongside us. And for that, we are so grateful. In Jesus' name, amen. All right. Um, sure. Appreciate you all. It's been fun having you here this morning. Again, this was a last minute, last minute switcheroo. And, uh, um, God gave us a little something different. So that was great. Uh, next week, if you come back on the back shed, it's going to be a special one. I am going to have as my guest, Dan Palmer. Dan Palmer is the local director of youth for Christ and, uh, an old friend of mine from years ago, Dan actually spoke at sunrise. Uh, about five years ago, uh, actually, during that time when Derek had had his accident, Dan came in and 
and shared with us on a Sunday morning. He is a, a guy that loves Jesus, loves his word. He communicates it well. Um, and, and he is being used by God here in our community to reach young people. So that's going to be a fun conversation that you will not want to miss here in the back shed. For those of you that tuned in to hear Dan Canoin, uh, we are hoping to have him back in two weeks. Um, and we'll talk about his book, Useful to the Master. All right, that's it for today. We hope you've had a uh, good morning following along. I sure have. And I will look forward to seeing you right back here next Monday in the shed. Bye-bye. Mm -hmm.